Beautiful mamas, today's conversation is one you want to get your pen and paper out for and maybe even listen to again because there are so many value-packed nuggets and bits of knowledge in here as I had the pleasure of having registered celebrity dietitian and nutrition therapist Kim Shapira on the show. Kim has over 25 years experience and specializes in assisting people rebuild their relationship with food without shame. And she's created a method of six simple rules that has been turned into a book called This Is What You're Really Hungry For. And lucky us, she unpacks what those six rules are today to help you quit your on-again, off-again relationship with dieting for good, to become healthier and happier than ever. Let's dive in. Hey mama, welcome to the Balanced Mom Method Podcast. I know you're here because you're tired of living day after day like you're drowning in the responsibilities of motherhood. You're done struggling with trying to find the time and energy to get it all done every day. And you want to show your little ones a good example, but you're so exhausted, which has your negative self-talk on repeat, your patience spread thin, and you feel like you're losing yourself a little more every day. Plus, the mom guilt, societal comparison game, and unpredictabilities of motherhood just does not help in trying to make a change. Well, sweet friend, this podcast will guide you on how to connect with yourself to break free from that survival mode cycle, all by identifying and possibly simplifying your habits. Hey, I'm Jenna, and I've been where you are. I was consumed in the struggles of motherhood, and I needed to make a change to take back control of my time, energy, identity, and life. And in finding that freedom, it became my mission to help make that connection with moms that we can give our children and families the best and not at the expense of our own health, self, and well-being. Moms shouldn't have to choose between their families, priorities, and themselves. We can balance it all, and it all starts within ourselves. Let me take your hand and make that connection with you and equip you with simple, lifelong habits. If you are ready to say goodbye to just surviving and finally reclaim your life and motherhood, then you are in the right place. Let's get to the root of cultivating real change because it's time to feel like you again. Warm up that cold coffee, pop in your earbuds, and tighten that top knot, mama. Let's overcome together. All right, mamas, I am so excited for today's episode because we have a guest on the show, Kim Shapira, a registered celebrity dietitian and nutritional therapist, and I could not be more stoked to learn from her today because honestly, I learned at a young age the hard way, the importance that food is fuel because I struggled with an eating disorder in college and my personal revelation in that healing process. And this is very much the cliff notes version was that I had to get out of my own mind, my own mindset, that food was the one thing that I had control over in my life in that time, in that season of my life, that emotional habitual cycle, that obsession that counting, the restriction, the binging, everything that I felt that I had control of in the nutrition aspect, I had to get back to the basics, that food, that nutrition is fuel to help my body thrive and survive, as simple as that. And then when becoming a mom, insert a whole new set of potential triggers, if you will, of not having time for time for yourself, not having time to learn new recipes or healthy recipes for your family. Your self-esteem might not be the highest. You might not feel good about yourself and food is that outlet for you at the end of the night so that emotional you know cycle that you might be going into when your kids go to bed you might struggle with negative self-talk or cringe at yourself you know looking at yourself in the mirror but we all are busy overwhelmed overstimulated and maybe we just don't know where to start so we might long just for simple nutrition a simple solution to cut out that emotional tie that keeps us going through those so- same thought cycles those same thought patterns and same habit patterns that make it feel impossible to make a change. So I want to pass this heavy, but very powerful topic over to an expert (laughs) who is also a mom and she gets it. So I want to talk about her method, her philosophies and hear what she has to bring to today's conversation. I'm so excited to learn from you today, Kim. I'm so happy to be here. And wow, that was like very, very like powerful. Um, I loved everything you said and sorry, my dog is sneezing behind me. Um, But that, thank you for all of that insight into you and probably what so many other women and moms are dealing with today. So I'm so excited to share everything I know about patterns and mindset and narrow-mindedness, I'm going to add, and just food as fuel. So let's get into it. It's great. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I just, yeah, I just want to, if okay. Okay. Let me, let me take it. Baton. Yeah, go. <laughs> um, okay. So just a little bit about me. I've been in practice for over 25 years. And so I was never 
somebody who was super passionate about food um, or food as fuel, mm -hmm. but I was always passionate about health. And so it's interesting because I'm going to kind of weave a little bit of myself into why even eating disorders, disordered eating, or fear around food begins mm -hmm. really is in the first six years of our life, we all develop these emotional triggers or hot buttons. Sure. And we could all grow up in very loving homes. We're still going to be impacted and affected. And then we're going to work the rest of our lives to master these triggers. And when something traumatic happens in our life, we're going to develop new ones. So even though you might've had three or five in the beginning, you might end up with 10, depending on how stressful your life is and what trauma you're surviving. And like, for instance, I always say, nobody is coming out of COVID unaffected, right? Like our personal stories are playing out and the trauma is real for all of us. Some of us are annoyed that there is COVID. Some of us are annoyed that we have to leave our house, right? Everybody has their own trauma to experience. And so what happens is, as we're kind of developing and picking our careers, we actually choose careers to help master our triggers. So what I want to explain is basically how I ended up here, right? Of course. Yeah. I was 12 and I got sick and I ended up in the hospital and having a really rough year, having multiple reconstruction, reconstructive surgeries. And what that led to was um, a shopping addiction, really. Because I ended up going to the doctor every Wednesday for five years. And my mom used to say to me, don't cry. We'll go shopping after your doctor appointments. And so I would spend the entire time I was at the doctor appointments visualizing what I was going to buy. And it was a way for me to survive the difficult moments of being examined. And I was always expecting bad news around my health. And so when I came to, when it came to choosing a career, I knew that I wanted to pick a career where I could help people be healthy or their healthiest selves because I had so many people help me become my healthiest self. And that is how I ended up in a field of nutrition because I know that food, it all starts and ends with the way that our body responds to food and what food we put in our body. And so I opened a private practice immediately after graduate school. And my first client um, was a therapist, which is an important fact because she knew more than I did about the way the mind works at this time. And she, I put her on a diet and she lost 30 pounds. Wow. And I was like, so proud of myself. I was 27 and like kicking butt as far yeah. as I was concerned, making her healthy, you know, <laughs> fixing her cholesterol issues and potential health problems down the line. And then she told me she was going to gain the weight back. And she said her husband wanted to fool around with her all the time. Uh -huh. And she wasn't comfortable because she had been molested as a child. Oh my gosh. And I thought to myself, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. I have no idea what I'm doing because I don't understand if kale is healthy, why aren't you just eating it? Mm -hmm. And then as I started understanding that my clients were eating the way that I was shopping, I started seeing that I needed to heal myself first sure. before I could really have any impact on people's lives. Mm -hmm. And so um, once I was having a conversation with my mom and I needed to end that conversation really quickly because I wanted to get to Bloomingdale's mm -hmm. and she laughed at me and she said, you know, Kim, there's a sale every day. And I was like, my mind was blown. I was like, what do you mean? There's mm -hmm. a sale every day. And then I was like, okay, that is a seed that is planted in me that I'm not comfortable with or familiar with at all. So now I'm just going to sit back and kind of see if that's true. And it was. And then I started saying to my clients, there's food on every corner. Mm -hmm. There's always food available. Right. And it became like, as I started kind of healing my, myself, I started applying that to my clients, but with food, mm -hmm. which, you know, is how the Kim Shapira method came to be. And it is six rules. I call them six simple rules. Mm -hmm. They're obviously anything but simple, right. but a little bit of a hook. They're right. easy. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> it's and then like we're going to, right? Yeah. yeah. And then we're going to layer them, you know, yeah. like all of your life, you know, lessons and, and course correct. So the, the six simple rules are the first one has three parts to it. 
It's eat when you're physically hungry. So what that really says is only shop when you need something, <laughs> but I'll keep it around food. So eat when you're hungry, start with your normal portion and wait 15 minutes to see if you need more food. So this is me looking at a Gucci purse that I can't afford, putting it on hold and walking away. And when I did the walk away and I distracted myself, I recognized I no longer wanted that Gucci purse. That was an impulse that I didn't need. But scientifically speaking, in order to, to feel satisfied, it takes a full 15 minutes from the first bite you eat until that fullness hormone glucagon enters your stomach. So it's scientifically proven that if you start with half and you wait 15 minutes, you most likely don't need more food right now. And so basically I'm giving you a fail safe that if you start with half and you wait, you're eating half the amount of food you would normally eat. Therefore, you're definitely going to be losing weight or paying attention to your normal appetite. So you're going to regulate weight maintenance or get down to your goal weight. So now I was being more impactful because people were starting to understand that it, what is hunger? This is not something that most people talk about. They just mostly talk about kale being healthy. Right. Yeah. Or like, yeah, the, the emotional piece, like I'm eating because I'm bored. Like it's right. I love that you bring that mental or the mindset piece into it because it's, it's huge. There's so yeah. many. Yeah. There's well, it's coming there. and it's, yeah, it's coming in a, in a bigger way. So rule number two says eat what you love, but really it says eat what you love, but make sure the foods love you back. Oh, so that. there's the registered dietitian piece, right? Like what I was finding is that my clients were eating the foods that they think they should eat because they're healthy or for whatever reason, but then they were also eating the foods they shouldn't eat after no matter what they were not, didn't have the willpower, or I want to say the inner power mm -hmm. to resist. And so what we know is restriction leads to binges. Mm -hmm. And so if you have permission to eat what you like, then you're not really restricting, right? But it's eat what you love. Go back to rule number one, only when you're hungry and start with half. Mm -hmm. There's no way a half a croissant is bad, right? There's no way. It's just not right. And so what ends up happening is because truly if somebody is overweight and they want to lose weight, the weight is the bigger problem, mental health wise. And for, you know, cholesterol, blood sugar, blood pressure, heart disease, mm -hmm. cancers, all the reasons, right? So normalizing your weight, but also releasing the fact that food is bad or scary when it's not is also equally important. Sure. And recognizing like, wait, I love croissants. So I'm going to eat half of it, mm -hmm. but why am I suddenly very bloated after I'm eating? And like, I've been constipated for days, mm -hmm. starting to recognize that there are ingredients that you think you love, that there are, there could be alternatives that might be better for your particular body right now mm -hmm. is really important. And then rule number three is eat without distractions. And so this one is the the mental mindful component, right? We eat for three reasons because the food is in front of us. We tend to eat 30% more food just because it's in front of us. Mm -hmm. We eat for emotional reasons and we eat for hunger. Mm -hmm. And just recently, I'm starting to think that we eat because we have cravings. So there's really four reasons. Mm -hmm. So removing distractions and being able to understand what your body needs, honoring the relationship you have with your body, putting that relationship as the priority is going to help you kind of be more mindful. Right now, I'm thinking about ice cream. Mm -hmm. It could be because I'm tired, stressed, um, it's in front of me, but I need to check in with my body and see if I'm actually hungry. And if I'm not, then I'm gonna tell myself I can have the ice cream later because mm -hmm. I can, I just don't need it right now. Right. So can I interject and ask a question? Yes. yes. So being a mom with little ones at home, how do you eat without distraction? Do you suggest eating not when they eat or no. eating with them? No, like it's you very important that they see you eat. Sure. It's okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's, that's a very good question. And we have 60,000 thoughts a day in response to whatever we see, smell, feel, or hear. Mm -hmm. But if I asked you right now, while we're in this conversation, how badly do you have to pee? Could you check in 
and let me know. I could. Scan your body. How badly yeah. do you have to pee? Mm, like on a scale one to 10, did you say? Yeah. Probably sure. like a, a four because I just went. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And then could you also say to yourself, I'm safe through this phone call and I know where the next toilet is? Yes. And you could do it while having a conversation with me? Yes. Okay. So yeah. even though you're distracted, you're okay. able to scan your body and honor what it needs. Mm -hmm. And if it was really, yeah. really bad, you could say, Kim, I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. right. right. So you didn't wake up this morning and think, oh my God, I'm going to have to pee six times today. And I have no idea where those toilets are and how that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. You totally trust that you'll find a bathroom. Mm -hmm. And like in general, generally speaking, we eat about 21 to 30 times a week. Mm -hmm. Right. You have never yeah. had to worry that there'll be food mm -hmm. and you never starve to death. And we have this really irrational fear that there won't be enough mm -hmm. or there isn't more. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as you can really talk back to your mind and say, oh, my gosh, thank you for telling me I need ice cream right now. You're just basically telling me I need a deep breath. I'm not OK. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. is stressful. Mm -hmm. I can take a deep breath. I can, you know, delay gratification and have that ice cream later when I'm physically hungry. Sure. And we can do that all while we're distracted. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you can't eat with other people or be, you know, doing other things. You just need to take a second and scan your body and see why you're having the thought that food is a good idea. Mm -hmm. I love that. Like honoring your body. Mm -hmm. Did that I answer your that. question? No, it does. And the reason I ask it's I feel like everything that you're sharing, it totally coincides with the four step formula that I have within the balanced mom method being you've said recognize a bunch and like the number one of the balanced mom method is identify. So really getting to that root. So I just I love all these parallels. Keep going. Okay, okay great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so rule number four is 10,000 steps every single day. So just like people are focused on like kale is healthy, they're also focused on what workout can I take in that day? And so, you know, there's 24 hours in a day. And if you're taking an exercise class for 40 minutes or 30 minutes, I'm guessing you're mostly sedentary. And we need to move our body throughout the day, every day. Mm -hmm. And when we move our body, at least 10,000 steps, we are balancing our circadian rhythm, which is our sleep and wake up hormone. And basically, which also controls and regulates our digestion, our stress and our weight. So 10,000 steps is important for everything to do with your body. Mm -hmm. And you can take a spin class, you could take a hit class, that's all great. But you also need to get 10,000 steps, they can count towards your 10,000 steps but it needs to be 10,000 steps every day. I mean, I sit for probably seven hours a day. Mm -hmm. I'm very sedentary, but I get 10,000 steps every single day. That's a great, just starting goal is yeah, yeah. 10,000 steps. I love it. But if that feels hard and scary, like if you're not getting 10,000 and if you look on your iPhone and you look on your health app, it's been mm -hmm. keeping track for years of all your steps. And let's say you're averaging 3,000. And you also sit for seven hours a day, it might feel very daunting. And that's not the point. Mm -hmm. The point is not to be looking at something and trying to be perfect. The point is to have progress and to reach the goal eventually. So if you're at three or 4,000, shoot for four to 5,000, then five to six, but constantly have progress. People who are striving for perfection fail. And it's a terrible trap that you need to prevent getting into mm -hmm. 100 okay. yes <laughs> okay and yeah, do something you love yeah a lot do of something talk. you love yeah yeah okay good and then rule number five is eight cups of water every single day and water is really underrated and under talked about and the truth is is that we can't survive without water we can last three days in max and it would be very painful if we didn't drink water <clears throat> our entire body, <clears throat> excuse me, is 80 per, uh, 60 to 80% water, but our cells, our cells are 43% water. We're detoxing and cleansing all day long. And so by drinking water, it's literally working on every organ and every part of your body. And it's interesting, you and I briefly, before we started this, talked about motivation uh -huh. and, um, you know, one of the facts that decreases motivation is inflammation. 
And inflammation on a cellular level could be from dehydration. And so if anyone out there is lacking motivation to even take care of themselves and they just started drinking more water, they might find that they have less inflammation and more motivation. And the last rule is seven hours of sleep. And so this became a rule really in March of 2020, when I started noticing that all of my clients were so stressed out from COVID or when COVID hit and that the anxiety was causing lack of sleep. And I have always talked about sleep, but it hadn't been a rule until 2020. And the reason why sleep is so important is number one, melatonin, which is the antioxidant that kind of gets, it's the hormone that is also an antioxidant mm -hmm. that gets secreted around 9 p.m. actually works while we're sleeping as a vacuum to clean our cells. So when you even talk about inflammation, melatonin is the antioxidant that works to decrease it. So sleep is essential for our health. And so now suddenly in 2020, my clients were not sleeping. So their cortisol levels, which is the wake up hormone or the stress hormone was elevated. And that triggers a whole slew of responses from our adrenal glands that cause all of our hormones, our sex hormones to become imbalanced and then our blood sugars to become imbalanced. So now if you're not sleeping or getting seven hours and the average American gets about six and a half, mm -hmm. you're not sleeping, you're gaining weight and you're causing a whole slew of other health crises. So sleep is essential and there are so many sleep issues, thousands in fact, but if you find that you're having trouble falling asleep or staying asleep or waking up groggy, and it's not because your kids woke you up. No, definitely no. should talk to your doctor. Sure. But um, actually exercising first thing in the morning and getting onto a sleep routine really helps mm -hmm. with sleep. Sleep of is course. important. So mm -hmm. all six of these rules basically are what makes a person well, in my opinion. Sure. And I I love how you said this in the beginning, but they're they're simple. They're not yeah. this catastrophic, you know, you have to invest all this money or do all this research. It's things that we almost know that we should be doing, right? Yeah. There's things yeah. that we always know that we should be doing or shouldn't be doing, but it's the vices or whatever, you know, pull that might be that we're not, we're not doing the things. Yeah. So, it's interesting. I mean, I mean, they should be your value system. I call them rules on purpose because people get very triggered by that word. Sure. <laughs> And I do it on purpose, kind of like learning your ABCs or learning how to sit crisscross applesauce, like kind of being in kindergarten and learning how to play on the playground, right? Like these are become our value system. And like, I'm sure most of us would not leave the house without brushing our teeth. Right. It's a chore. Sometimes we don't do it the best that we could be doing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't want to be doing it, but we always do it because it's important to us. Right. And that's what these rules should be. And everything that you're saying, I'm just thinking like me speaking to my children, right? Like you do want to be setting that example also. So what are you telling them? You know, we have to brush our teeth before we leave the house. Yeah. So it's those things for you. You know, you have to put you first, not even putting you first, like your kids are always first also, but you have to put your health priority also priorities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's kind of like on an airplane, they ask you to put, you know, your life vest on first. And the reason is you're not available to anyone without it. Right. Exactly. And so you, it's not a selfish act. It's a very like self-caring act mm -hmm. to make sure that you're taking care of yourself so you can be available to others, which is like mostly why I get my steps in before I start my day mm -hmm. or at least the majority of them, because then I have a very clear head and I can be available to my clients and my children. Mm -hmm. Otherwise I'm thinking, Oh my God, I want to work out. I'm so frustrated in my body. Like I like have no time for myself, mm -hmm. but if I take the time, you know, then I, I don't think about it. Exactly. I'm better off. Exactly. Yeah. The episode right before this one was about transitioning, taking that fiber, really reconnecting with yourself also to be able to give your all for the rest of your day. And granted, I'm not in that position now to take my morning mindset routine. <laughs> my daughter's still up all the time in the middle of the night. So I am choosing sleep. And that's another hot topic on this show is like choose sleep. It's not an excuse. It's not, you know, you, you need to choose sleep also it's, there's a difference between grace and excuses. Um, yeah. but that morning mindset routine for me is something that I can't wait to get back to. Cause that is my me time every single day. Now, yeah. it's now, right. When I put them down for a nap, I'll take, you know, 10, 15 minutes before I start my work day. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, I'm glad you're doing it. Yeah. Good for you. And I work out with them. So they see mama working out, but it's something that just doesn't work. I'm not working out when they're sleeping because that's my precious time to have silence. (laughs) So no, I used to take my kids to the zoo Mm -hmm. on a daily basis, really. So I could get my steps Mm -hmm. and then it was just, you know, time together. And also like I was moving my body and we used to play, um, uh, Dora the Explorer. Uh-huh. So as they were getting older, we used to just go for walks, but pretend that we were hiding mm-hmm. from, oh my gosh, I can't even remember the name of, well, who is, I can't even remember. Oh my gosh. So, oh my gosh, uh, Swiper. Swiper. No Swiper. Swiper. Yeah. Swiper. We used yep. to hide from Swiper behind the trees and then run to uh-huh. the next tree. And like, yeah. that's how we would move. I love it. And that's, I, I know I keep, you know, dropping other things within the episodes of the show, but it's so true. Like we have to just keep things simple, include yeah. our kids, right? Too. Yes. Um, yes. I love it. So I I have to bring this up. You have a book coming out. I want to hear yes. all about your book. <laughs> you have a book releasing. I want to hear kind of more about that. Um, and then I do have one other question though. Yeah. So I'm backtrack a little bit. So you have these six steps. This is your method. Um, if I would say, like, if you have an anxious, overwhelmed mom, what is the the first step? I'm just so overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. Would you start with step one or would you start kind of with the six steps, like as a whole? Does it matter to use these in order or, or does that make sense? It does make sense. It's a good question. I think that like, if you look at wellness in general, it's really you in the middle of your life connected to all the things that are important. And in order for us to be well, that connection to all those things Mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. The reason people fail is because they think they already know what they need to do and they neglect to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And so if our goal is to be well, it is finding a connection to all six of these rules, um, Again, the goal is never perfection, Mm -hmm. right? So I do believe that what I do know to be true and what I believe is that we do exactly what we did yesterday, 47% of the time. Mm -hmm. And we have to create new habits, which then become, like I said, our values. So it's really recognizing I'm sleepwalking through my day, Mm -hmm. 47% of the time. Right. And that's why doing all six of these feels hard because I'm tired and I'm overwhelmed and I'm stressed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would urge anyone who's feeling overwhelmed by all six to do all six, mm-hmm. but just a little bit, 10% today, mm-hmm. pay attention just a little bit more because in order for you to change, you have to be connected mm-hmm. and you have to act like you don't know what you're doing. So I need everybody to start like walking in different directions to the kitchen, right? Like putting their keys in different places, being intentional Mm -hmm. with all six rules. I love that. Like I have a lot of clients who like their phone when they eat because food is boring. Mm -hmm. And the reality is it only takes three or four or five minutes to eat. And can we just choose to eat without a distraction? What would that look like? Because I also have those same clients who like their phone and they're procrastinating doing anything else. So they'll eat the entire time they're watching something. So they're eating more than they need. Mm-hmm. So just understanding that maybe you're doing that. Right. You know, and if I put my phone away, I can recognize is this food just something fun in my mouth and I need a little fun right now. Mm-hmm. So I would say all six. Sure. Long winded. No, that's, that's a very good answer because step two of the balanced mom method is audit is it's acknowledge step one is identify. So really getting to that root acknowledging, but step two is doing that audit of your lifestyle. Where are you right now? Stop being that robot being so monotonous throughout your days. So, um, that was, yes, that was a great answer. <laughs> Thank you. So that's Wait, what's, step, about that. what's step three and four. Tell me now. Okay. So identify step one, step two okay. is audit. So really do that audit of your life lifestyle. Step three is simplify. So where can you make simple shifts, simple changes to your life, to your habits, maybe unconditioning a habit to recondition, but in the simplest way possible. And that's kind of where my coaching comes in. Cause I could help with, with those things. Yeah. And step four is implement. So walk it out intentionally, yeah. you know, walk that out. And, um, you said connecting a couple times too. I'm actually 
I almost made a podcast solely about your mindset because yeah. I feel like that step one, that identify that connection piece, that acknowledgement, that's where it all starts. It really yeah. does all start within. So, um, yeah. everything always ties back to that. <laughs> it really does. I mean, we let our mind lead us mm -hmm. and we do need to pay attention to why we're even having that thought. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. I would agree. I, well, I like it. Yeah. I, know, I can't wait to get your book. So tell me about your book. <laughs> so my book is called, this is what you're really hungry for. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's so funny. Somebody was like, Oh, is that cake? Is the answer cake? <laughs> and the answer is really peace, peace oh, wow. around food, right? It's I just got um, chills. Mm, yeah, that. yeah. That's that's what we're hungry for. We're we're hungry for health, and we're hungry for peace around food. And so this is basically a really deep dive into the rules and how to have actionable steps to implement it into your life. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really proud of it. It took me 25 years to write, and it's coming July 25th. It is available for pre-order everywhere. Wonderful. So where can we find you then? You can find me on Instagram at Kim Shapiro Method. And that is also my website, Kim Shapiro Method. And um, on TikTok, Kim Shapiro Method. Awesome. <laughs> I'm everywhere is Kim Shapiro Method. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you. The, your book is, this is what you're really hungry for. And I, I truly got chills when you said it's peace because that was not what I was expecting. What were I you expecting? What were you expecting? I, I don't like, I just thought it was going to be about like principles about nutrition, you know, as I'm sure that's included, but I like, you're really hungry for the food to fuel your body. You know, like I, I wasn't yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. It's not a diet book and it's not a nutrition book. Oh, I can't wait to get it. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Okay. So everything that we discussed, it'll be linked in the show notes below everyone. Um, so I just, I can't wait to listen back to this episode also. And thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Thank I, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you want to add? Awesome. All I got. Thank you so much, Kim Shapira and the Kim Shapira method. And until next week, mamas, as always, simply be you. You have everything inside of you to reach your breakthrough. I'm sending my love and light. Thank you for finding this episode very well worth a farming. Please be mama worth you. Thank you so much for spending this time with me on the Balanced Mom Method podcast. I pray this episode has grown and helped you in some way. If it has, I'd be so grateful if you left a review sharing how it's impacted you. It truly lights me up hearing you're on your way to your breakthrough. And then, please share this episode with another mom who may be struggling to remind her we are never alone. And remember, there isn't ever a one-size-fits-all to overcoming our personal hardships, but there are a lot of parallels with how we show up to our lives and common habits we can make our own to live an intentional life full of peace, presence, confidence, clarity, and balance. Be sure to check the show notes for additional ways to connect with me, our mom community, and resources and courses for you to overcome your survival mode cycle once and for all with doable habits. Thank you. I appreciate all you are and all you do. Sending my love and light.